In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly and Andrew Fiore. The time has come again to be on Everybody and welcome to another edition of Defend Your Movie. I am one of your hosts, Sean Patrick Paul Donnelly, joined here by my very hairy co-host, who has no no signs of hairline slowing down in the near future. Uh, Andrew Fiore, everybody. Hi everybody, Andrew Joseph Fiore. Andrew, do you have a confirmation name? I don't remember what it was. You? What do you mean you don't remember what I, it was? I honestly don't remember. You did you go through a confirmation? I did. And you don't remember what the name was? I don't. Did you have a relative that was your sponsor? Yes, my aunt Syl. So, oh, uh, your aunt, aunt Sylvia. Oh, but that you didn't—that wasn't the name you chose. I guess it's Sylvia. It's—it's <laughs> it's your sponsor's name. Well, it doesn't have to be, but it's good if it is. I guess I don't know. Mine was. Oh, was mine? Wait. So yeah, Paul. My my got my. I know my you uncle. gave your whole name. You gave all four of the Beatles in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I no, uh, honestly don't remember. I remember walking down and she put my hurt into the hand on the shoulder for all the Catholics out there. Sorry to exclude everybody else. Yeah. But, uh. Well, we're talking about the one true religion. <laughs> yeah, the one true Lord and Savior. Uh, I remember it, but yeah, just 30, you know. It was, uh. No, it wasn't 27 years ago, probably. Yeah, it was it's a long six, time 15, ago. 13, 14. I think it's earlier than that. 13. Yeah, 13 or 14. It's like it's like I guess it's the Catholic version of the bar mitzvah, I guess, right? It's I don't kind know of. how it works. It's like I guess you're confirmed. Can we go to hell? Yeah, you once go you're to confirmed. Hell? Yeah, of course. What do you think? You just you have carte blanche to do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> well, I think we can get out of it real easy, uh, right? Isn't well, it? You just you, confess. You go to confession. It does. That seems just like an awful, real easy uh, way out. Um, like if you commit a murder, right? Do the priests have to say? They can't. You go to confession, and I think it would be a very insane conversation with the priest. Like, if you were like, if you went to the priest and you're like, I murdered somebody, right? Yeah. They can't tell the cops. But he also doesn't necessarily, I can absolve you. I think you have to, like, you have to be true. You can't just go, yeah, I did it. Absolve me. You have mor- to like well, be true. Murder is a mor- mortal sin, right? Of course. So I think it would just. I think it would take a couple of trips. <laughs> it would take a few hail marys. Take a few hail marys. <laughs> but but you're right. Maybe they don't absolve you. Like, could you get? I, just, I think that's what it is. It's like the priest can go. Well, son, I don't know if you feel. But then I don't know. He'd probably be scared for his life. Well, you. I think that. I think that. I think nowadays, or some. You know, some might try to find loopholes that they can tell the cops. So they can't tell the cops, but they can tell fellow priests that isn't a priest anymore that can t- go tell the cops. Like, yeah. By hearsay, hey, I heard this, but the actual direct priest didn't tell the cops. Right, right, right. Because a lot of the SVU episodes are like this, where they tell a priest about something, and then and the priest is like, he's he's oh he's, <laughs> he's overwrought going. because he's like, <laughs> he can't. That's horrible for radio. It's so bad for radio, but it's like, huh? It's went wrong. Let's go over here. <laughs> That's a Seinfeld reference. Thumbs up in the background. Yeah, it was him. The Seinfeld reference where they do the yeah, lineup, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's nodding, he's pointing his head to the guy who did it. <laughs> Kramer goes to the lineup. Um, candy bar lineup. The candy bar lineup. How many Twix one. does that make for you today? Like eight Twix? Yeah. That's the best line from that episode, candy bar lineup, which is when Jerry goes to buy a new car. He's with Putty. <laughs> when Putty, when they're broken up, Putty's giving him all the charges, and he goes, keys. And Jerry goes, keys? He goes, <laughs> How are you going to start it? How you start it? <laughs> <laughs> How you start it? How you start it? And it just stops there. It's taking me to Arby's. <laughs> I'm on Putty's side on that one. What'd you say? I'm on Putty's side on that one. Arby's delicious roast beef and cheese. Oh, my my, my buddy my buddy Mike is is a huge Arby's. Oh yeah, apologist. apologist. Um, <laughs> so what you call it? Uh, uh, 
Well, we. How are you, buddy? By the way, I'm great. I want to take a minute to thank Sean for uh, my lovely uh, 40th birthday gift. They got me a great movie themed T shirt. Yes, I finally got Andrew his gift. We got it to him. I, I it came a couple like probably like a week and a half ago, and I finally remembered to bring it when I saw you. It was funny too because we saw each other yesterday, and he goes, "Oh, I got to bring your shirt tomorrow." I go, well, "I didn't know it was a shirt." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> damn it. So I gave away what the gift was. I'm really sorry about that. I thought that. For some reason, I thought you guessed that it was a shirt or something. I don't know why. I don't why. think I so. No, you didn't. It was very lovely. It's a Camp Crystal Lake t-shirt, but it's like with the picture of the lake and the slogan. It's not an actual yeah. uh, t-shirt about the movie. No, it's just the camp. It's like if you, it's like if you went camp to the Crystal, camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, whenever I get movie shirts, I like that. Me too. Where it's straight up just like the, I don't like when it's like. I, even, I would wear a movie shirt like if it was the if it was like the the original like you have a Jaws shirt like like I would wear like a Jaws shirt yeah. straight up like Jaws but sometimes they try to get cute with it with a, like all right so the, the shirt that I got you you're like oh they have the slogan on it but it's the real slogan it's like come for adventure yeah it's adventure whatever it is. Voting. but like sometimes with these shirts they try to get cute with like it's a murderous good time like it'll just be, it'll just be like corny and you're like oh I don't want that I saw a guy walking. On my way here, maybe, and he was just kind of a you know slumpy older guy, and he had on a shirt that said, "The dad abides," and I was just like, oh, uh, guy. "It's like the door abides." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, there's a big Lebowski that's dad you, joke. Exactly. That's a joke. oh god. They were. I was watching. Uh, speaking of Big Lebowski, before we get into things, there's a couple things I had to talk about. I saw. I finally did my homework. Some of you know what that means. Yes. Um, and so it's one zero. Andrew did not. Uh, no, I'm kidding. So um, no, we established I had seen uh, uh, after hours. No, he did yes, not. Yes, we did. Uh, Alex, did we? Yeah, remember, I go, oh, right, after hours, after hours. He, saw, yeah, he we did go see back after hours? Yeah, we can go to the archives. All right, all right, we'll check it out. Uh, I'm just kidding anyway. But um, I, Big Lebowski, I was, wa- it's so funny, man. Like, that was 98, and 98. I was watching this Today Show thing with Buscemi, Jeff Bridges, and John Goodman, and they all look like, I guess that was 20 some odd years ago, you yeah. know? But I guess it was 25 years ago. It was 21. 20, no, oh, you're right. 21 years ago. What am I saying 25 for? <laughs> anyway, they all look just like exhausted. Like oh, John really? Goodman's the only person I know that when he was heavy, he looked healthier. Like, <laughs> and he lost all that weight, but he has all that loose skin. So like he looked like a badass. He's a big dude in all the movies he was in. Like he one time he barreled by me on the street. I don't know if I ever told that story. Really? I was on the phone with an ex-girlfriend, and, he was, and I, I couldn't believe it. It was him. He's like six foot something. Barreling down the street, doing that like famous person like a thousand yard stare thing where yeah. where don't talk to me because I know right. I get stopped all the time. But he was dry, big, big dude. But he looked, you know, he was burly. Like he yeah. looked, And then now you see on these interviews, and you're like, oh, you're just kind of like an old dude that's kind of looks. He lost a lot tired. of weight. He lost, he lost a, lot a lot of weight. weight. I saw him at a stand up show one time. He's just in the audience. Really? Yeah, right over here, at the old UCB. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I think it might have been a week he was hosting SNL, and he, you know, because it was all. Like did the uh, I, did I tell? Have we done an episode where I told my story about Caroline's? Idris Elba? Yeah, I can't remember. Well, Andy just gave it away. <laughs> I was at Caroline's. I, I, I have no memory either. <laughs> I I was at Caroline's. I, I brought this up already. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, yeah, I yeah. thought. We, I swear to God, I thought we did it last week. That's we what, we might. I can't believe I wouldn't have mentioned it. But I don't think I ever brought it up. So what happened was, I was at Caroline's. I did a showcase show there. 30 people in the audience, but they were great. They were a great audience. I'll take that every time. <clears throat> oh, it's fantastic. I'd rather three that are better than 100 yeah. that suck. So uh, so while I'm there, there's a dude in the back. It's like this big dude. And he kind of looked like, like a famous football player or something, right? So I was like, oh, he looks famous because he's like, everything's primped up. Like, the guy's like, you know, he just looks great. Like, you know, brand new clothes, brand new sneakers. So I'm like, oh, yeah, he might be like a sports guy or something. He kind of has that look to him. Like, a, like you know. Anyway... So as he's walking out, because I saw him a couple times during the show, and, and then he was like, oh, good job, man, as he's walking out. Him and his crew are walking out. So then right behind him, like he, like he was kind of hiding, out of nowhere, Idris Elba lifts his head up and goes, good job, man, and then keeps going, like his head kind of down. I'm like, oh! So Stringer I, Bell. I, Stringer Bell. So, and I'm a, a huge Wire person. I've watched it four times. So I... I, I follow him to the lobby. I go, I don't want to be a pain in the ass. And you can say no if you want. Obviously, you can say no. But when I be able to get a picture, he's like, yeah, you just have to be quick because I have to get out of here. So I took this like blurry shot of me and Idris. And I'm like, I freaked out. Freaked out, dude. 
I was That's awesome. shocked. I was shocked that he was there. But you know why? He, he goes there. And I don't know if this is the reason, but one of them is because he, he used to. Know, yes. He was a door guy. There. Yeah, he used to work there. So uh, that was my <laughs> seeing they a celebrity. Page six, by the way. They used your picture. Yes. Your post page they six. They used my Instagram picture and page six, but they didn't put my name in the article. She, I know. I saw that. I was they, like, that. They, it, was, it was Pete, this guy, this comic Pete's girlfriend that did the article. And he's like, she wants to talk to you about it. I was like, I don't even know what I would say. And whenever they, I get hit up for stuff like that, I always, I don't, I don't. I never respond because I'm like I don't think it looks like I'm trying to cash in on this guy just going to see a comedy show or like yeah, but put yeah. your name out there yeah I put your name out there All but press put, is good it, press. it had a link to my Instagram you know that was good anyway uh, and then besides that um, that was an insane moment like I, like like to the point where before I saw him there I was like I really hope I can meet Idris Elba one day like I was like come on I thought that in my head that's so funny because I'm like such a big fan like that's one of my favorite characters of anything <laughs> of all time Stringer Bell because it's such a great character it's such a complex can we test this as we, when we're leaving what do you mean you go hey I really hope to meet Lindsay Lohan one day and we'll see if she's at the show tonight. <laughs> oh, no. I've said it in the past. I didn't say it like that day. Oh, I thought you. I heard you say that day. Oh, I no, no. I meant like that. have magical powers? <laughs> I just conjure up celebrities. <laughs> um, anyway. And oh, then, no, I went with Lindsay Lohan. What did you say? <laughs> yeah. We could probably meet her in like three hours. Yeah. We have you know, an ounce of Coke. And just, <laughs> I, know, like a, I don't even know that's her deal anymore. But I did see a thing about her in the news, Lindsay Lohan, that she just abandoned her Mykonos club in, in Greece, whatever oh, it is. Oh, right. You know, or on the island of yeah, Mykonos. She had I that club that. where the reality show was. Yep. And they say she just left and everybody's gone from this. Like there's, Lohan, just, it was like Lohan's Beach Club or something like, like that. like the reality show. It was for the reality show. And I guess I guess it wasn't. I don't know what happened. I, haven't, I didn't read it in detail, but. She's gone. She's they're gone. Classic Lohan. Classic Lohan. But if you watch the commercial for it, it's it looked hilarious. It yeah. looked amazing. Yeah. I thought it'd be on forever because it looked really, really good. Because <laughs> it was such a train wreck, you know. Uh, anyway, so I did do my homework. I watched Network. I want to know if you have any questions for me about Network. Yes. Uh, I have. I had some thoughts on. It. I I did love it. I I think the writing was like it might Jesus. be the one. It's the bit. Patty Chayefsky wrote it. I mean, you know. So you know it's going to be, but I think it might be one of the best scripted movies of all time. It is so because so I texted you. I was cruising around Netflix and I it's it just popped up and I go oh it's finally on Netflix. So I texted you the screenshot of me. I go you got no excuses now. Yeah, it's on Netflix. And yes, the writing. But and what else did you think? I thought I thought it was fantastic. I thought the acting was fantastic. Ugh. I thought that it was. I thought it was years ahead of its time. It's- Prophetic. Uh, it's very prophetic, and it's it, it, yeah. There's not. They really they they kind of nailed on the head as far as like yeah the sensationalism of jur- journalism goes. Exactly. It's like they're and you wonder when it came out. At what point was it happening? Because it was really only happening with the local news. Because they had was CNN in, in, in its infancy at that point, like twenty four hour news cycle. I don't even think. Yeah, I don't it was think it was. Yet. I think they just noticed that the local news was yeah. getting a little uh, a little a little more sensational. And right. It was all about the crimes. It was all about the murders. All yep. about the robberies. Because they say that in the movie, and then <clears throat> that just grew to encompass the twenty four hour news cycle. Because once there was big giant. Uh, uh, big giant um, like disasters like nine yeah. eleven or whatever happened. That's what welcomed uh, like the CNN type. Uh, but they, without even knowing it, invented reality TV too. Yeah, like they, uh, reality TV didn't exist for years after that. Yeah, because I don't even think anybody thought to do it. But it's still, if you go back and watch. They go, yeah, we want to follow this person around and the, you know, and the, yeah. the, the cult and uh, the kidnappings and all the real footage of the bank robberies. You go, <laughs> yeah. That's genius. Yeah, it's super genius. I think, yeah, it's very, it's pretty prophetic to see that's what's coming. And then it's also, think about it. If you're writing that script back then, you're guessing. You're guessing that's going to happen. But that you have to have a pretty, <laughs> pretty big brain. Yeah, exactly. That's your big boy to, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to to see that that's the way that the 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 the, the kind of the the lexicon of of a meeting yeah. is going to go like you because you could be I think you can make I think there's a lot of guesses made about what was going to happen on TV and what was, but like th- that movie just to a T nails it yeah it's top five all time for me I love it so much because even the, the the new show that's created in it after he gives that speech and he becomes the star and right the new show the like, the the very like. 
the mad the profit sensational of the, the mad profit Howard one Beale. with all the different segments. There's like there's new shows now that are like that. Like, yes, so like well, the that, soothsayer. You know they have and yeah. then, uh, uh, like think about you know that show Chasing News, which is them in the room. It's like TMZ, but it's news, and it's the, it's the corniest, phoniest right, news you ever right. seen in your life. It kind of reminds me of that, where it's like, oh, you just want to make this look like it's a reality show, and then you're you're kind of spooning f- spoon feeding news in a little bit. Yeah, but it's also the most sensational type news. Yeah. And uh, so I and loved it. I, I there was you know I, because I didn't see it back in the day, I, there was a little bit of lost on me as far as like the seventies feel to it. But like, uh, well, I love that. I don't mind it, but I'm just saying like, it's still gritty. The plot of him, I think the plot. Of, I was talking to my roommate about it, and it's funny because the, 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 there's the whole conversation they have about killing what's his name Howard uh, Beale. Howard Beale. It's uh, I mean they, it's Jesus. Yeah, it's Jesus. Because he goes, my Robert Dean, super funny comic, friend of the show. He had a great thing. Where he goes, I think it's biblical. He goes, I think that what happens is they 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 raised the, they made, they made this guy a prophet. They made him the Messiah. Right. And then once they didn't like what he was doing, they they had him. Killed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's. Completely, that's straight up like religion. That's that insane. one works on a few levels, though, too. Just the way that yeah. they are soulless Hollywood executives uh, who well, can then, just yeah. talk about something talk like about that, that in total sincerity. Yes, but it's like you're talking about a human life. They're talking about like they're talking about like you're ta- exactly. Yeah, and that that's was the point why I think, of the conversation. My favorite scene is like the cost effectiveness effectiveness of killing. Exactly, him. and yeah. that's why when uh, Schmack Schumacher uh, William Holden. Breaks up with uh, young Faye Dunaway, cha 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 cha. By the way, <laughs> um, who is great in it? She's great. Uh, his, I mean, what a brutal, brutal. breakup scene. When he, I mean, he undresses her yeah. figuratively with his words. I mean, he just, you know, he goes, "You're," he goes, "You're reduced to nothing." He goes, the, the common, ru- the common rubble of banality. Yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ, dude. Holy yeah. shit. Well, she's he a goes, piece of shit. Yeah, he goes, you've become one of your humanoids. That you, he goes, it's just, oh, man. What Howard talks about. Oh, you become man. one of these a, yeah. quasi-humans that Howard talks about. Yeah. Yeah, she... That's why when they go like on their affair, they just show like little... Uh, the, when they go away for the weekend, when they rekindle their affair, he doesn't say one word yeah. the whole time. It's she's just like they see him, them doing different things. She goes, and then, you know, but the ratings, but we can't get so-and-so for that. It just makes a point where that's all, all she her gives talking points about. were just yeah, it was brilliant great. movie, man. I'm so glad you finally saw it. It's, it's highly rewatchable, too, because and the cast is so great. Right? You got Duval, you got William Holden. Well, you know what it is? It's also I mean, what, the type of guy that he's talking about that it, it, what, did go away around that time. Like It's almost like the type of guy your grandfather would have been. Yeah, that didn't give a shit. Like you know, it's almost like a tough those old, old guy. News, yeah, gritty newsmen, news guys, or those old guys that. There's a the, great scene when you know he has a strong, silent type. You could call. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, where they don't care. They they don't care about the bullshit of the ratings and all this. They just want to do their jobs, yeah. go home, whatever it is. I love that movie. But 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 they're really, the reason why the thing that was lost on me was like at first I didn't realize their relationship, like him having the affair. It's like. I, I didn't understand the point of that in the movie, like him cheating on his wife with Faye Dunaway, and then and the reason you needed it was to show that he wasn't all he wasn't holier than thou either. Like he he had his own issues, and on top of that, I think it was because um, so you he could give that speech to her at the end. That's like you're not a good person, and I was attracted to this world, and now I'm seeing it for what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's sitting there going, oh, I'm obsessed with her. He, he, even to the wife. Because they have also... It's oh, a very who's great, old by the school, way? The wife's great. It's an Beatrice, old school uh, conversation. What's her name? Beatrice Strait. Uh, old school conversation between him and the wife. She's like, I'm not giving up on you. Like, which yeah. nowadays, every woman would just be like, get the fuck out of my sight. By the way, I think still holds... Uh, she Beatrice Strait won Best Supporting Actress for the shortest amount of screen time. Really? I th- yeah, his wife. Well, she's great. That, she's that, so that good conversation that. is great. Yeah. And but what I'm saying is, he. So the whole idea is like even. So the whole point of it is, even he fell for the Faye Dunaway bullshit, and then when he got into yep, it, yep. that's when he realized, oh, I screwed up. <laughs> Duvall, is there something going on with you and Shoemaker? She goes, not anymore. Yeah, great, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Duvall's great in it too. He's a good bad guy in it. Yeah. So I'm glad I watched it. I definitely would rewatch it. It was it's on TV. Really good. I would, yeah, I would keep it's it one on. of those like every six months or so. You just once a year. It just feels good. You go, oh, network man. Yeah. I yeah. mean, how about Lumet? Seventy five and seventy six. Dog Day and then yeah. Network back to back. Back to back. I mean, and then also one thing I I just love the idea that when they when they put it on Howard Beale the first. When he's about to, when they told tell him he has to retire, the first speech he has, I think is the best one of the thing where he's like, 
I've been bull. This is bullshit. The whole thing's bullshit. It reminds me of my, my dad would say, that. like, my dad would be like, everything's bullshit. Like that's what. <laughs> so, so it kind of remind. I don't know if he got it from the movie or whatever it was, but it kind of reminded me of my dad a little bit because I was like, oh yeah, that's that's really cool. Like once he got to the the the, the movie fun part was him being like, I'm mad as hell and I'm sure, not gonna sure. take it anymore. Like that's the fun part of the movie. But the part that he. I see. I thought it was going to be a totally different movie because of how that first speech was. I thought he would be more of a uh, sober. Uh, he was. It wasn't going to be like this guy's having a. Men- he was going to have a mental break. It's funny too. I was thinking about that walk uh, the other day. People just don't walk around drinking like that anymore. No, you know they're doing their meeting. You know their pre-show meeting. I mean, he, you know, he's just got a, a rocks glass. Full yeah. Of booze. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go, oh, yeah they're smoking as any chance they get. Yeah, yeah. whatever. It was really that's why it was cool. But what I'm saying is, <clears throat> when it comes to Howard Beale, that first speech to me. It's such a great scene because it was just a guy who really didn't give a fuck, and you were still on the side of. Yeah, because he kind of becomes his own enemy at the end because he fall. He he really it's, gets one hundred percent. The into way it. they do the movies too is so well done because they make a point of showing the newsroom, the control room, actually. Uh, not paying attention to him. Yes, and it's just like that. Yeah. It, it, it works so well because, and you know that's what's happening. And they go, is it, "Someone just did Howard just say he was going to kill himself on the air?" <laughs> you know, they're not even paying attention. It's like, yeah, that's that's also. Uh, 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 just a, a what's problem. the word I'm looking for? Like a metaphor for society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like you don't. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody's yeah. paying attention. Brilliantly so, uh, done. Like just really every all, every facet of the I'm movie. I'm a fan. I'll rewatch Go it. Go see it if you haven't. It's a classic. It's on Netflix now. So please do yourself a favor. You're not going to be disappointed. I I promise that to you, Defenders. Definitely check it out, Defenders. Uh, we can get to the meats of the potatoes. We have a matchup. Might be a controversial one. What do you think? Maybe it's a controversial one. We it's trying. not like two of the most popular movies ever. But no, but they kind of had the same vibe kind of to them a little bit. Network and that kind of put the I mean, term my, network in our heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there was like shared uh, shared fonts maybe in these movies. Yeah, like for the titles of these movies. I don't know if it's the same font, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, really? I don't they kind of so. both have the same vibe to me a little bit. Like, uh, I, I don't know if anybody's going to get what I'm saying when I say that. But and also we have another thing that that, that uh, brings them together. You brought the point. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the two movies we're, we're putting against each other today are Social Network versus Moneyball. Yeah. And at first glance, you're going to be like, "What the fuck are you two talking about?" <laughs> but you tell them what you're, what, how you. Link well, I them. go. I think we can make it work because you have kind of two never before seen uh, things that kind of changed, not the world. One, ch- one definitely changed the world. But changed at least their industries. Yeah. Now, the, uh, it, now it's just, now it's standard practice. So they're, they're both going against the grain type. They're movie. both one individual goes against the grain. There are two things invented by uh, kids from Ivy League schools. Just it's just nerds who yeah. invented these two things, and now they're blanketed blank. Blanketedly, I don't know if I can say that word. <laughs> they're accepted. Blanketedly? Or blanketedly? <laughs> blanketedly. <laughs> I was trying to force a word that didn't exist. <laughs> Blankably. Uh, they're accepted across uh, the globe now. And in that is what I... <laughs> now I'm all tripped up. And what I mean by that is uh, Sabermetrics and Facebook. Yeah. So Sabermetrics, you, you might know this more than me. I didn't realize this. Is it like... I thought it was still is that an outsider's thing. Is it a is it a uh, uh, um, uh, a stable of baseball? At this Absolutely. Point? Now now that now every team has an analytics department, but they don't doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go with it. They just have that. Option. I think it's highly it's highly taken over for scouting, and I could be wrong in this. I'm not a huge huge baseball guy, but I believe. It is now just as important as a guy going and watching a player as a scout. Wow. I didn't realize using, that. But I, here's the thing. I think they go and find a prospect and then look at his analytics, at his sabermetrics. They go, okay, what's his OPS? What's his, you know, blah, 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 doing this. So yeah. I think it's now just common practice yeah. to have those two side by side wow. when measuring a player. That's great. Um, and in Facebook, obviously, nothing needs to be said about that. Well, it ch- changed the face of the planet. But, uh, started by you know Mark Zuckerberg or however want to you ever want to cut that yeah the you know the Winklevoss twins. and it's kind <laughs> of like it's kind of like a went went and they're both it's funny because they're very similar because when the chips are down these guys come up with these these things and it, hey, yeah for him it was meeting girls and for this guy it was like <laughs> I suck at my job right. like you know, for Brad Pitt it was more it's you know, a little more for Brad Pitt. it's a, that's where the difference lies it's that's a little more is that he found this guy uh, Paul D Podesta they don't use his real name in Moneyball at the you know uh, Jonah Hill's character yeah who and all for making my case uh, nominated for 
uh, Best Supporting Actor, Brad Pitt, also nominated for Best Actor, and the movie nominated for Best Picture. Social Network was... Moneyball. Oh, yeah, Social Network? Was nominated as well. Okay. I didn't know. I'm just talking Let's, about... Right. Talking, I'm, I'm defending my guy. I got you. All right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I'm defending Moneyball if we didn't get to that. Yeah. Uh, but... They changed his name, but Paul D. Podesta was this kid from Yale who uh, discovered or just, you know, used his analytical skills or whatever to kind of create this way of analyzing ballplayers for stuff that you normally wouldn't look for. And uh, Billy Bean, who is a real life character, was the general manager of the Oakland Athletics, uh, was coming off a loss uh, in the 2002 divisional playoffs. And decided to, he was losing, he lost a bunch of uh, guys to free agency. Big right. Jason Giambi, Johnny Damon. So he goes, you know, I got to try and change my way of approaching things because I don't have a big payroll. Right. So right. he had to go and look at this different kind of way of doing things. And he was going over, uh, you know, all the normal scouting rules. And, it was and just, he was getting flack from like the old school guys. Oh, well, yeah. His, I mean, his so. His team, his other, yeah. He brings in this kid who goes, let me ask you this, because Billy Bean was a big, big, highly touted prospect who never just kind of you know made it in the uh, major league baseball right so he you know went to the bat went to the front office and he goes uh to paul db he goes using your tools would you have drafted me where i got drafted and he goes well i would look at this he goes i probably wouldn't have drafted you till the ninth round <laughs> which is like crazy you know yeah, what i mean yeah right so uh that kind of like wins him over it kind of proves to and him he like, just, I, yeah yeah so he hires him as his assistant general manager, and they start. I don't have to give the whole recap. You guys have seen the no, movie. yeah, but but, but you know it idea. goes against uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman plays Art Howe, who's the real life uh, gen- uh, coach. Who the real life guy hates that Philip Seymour Hoffman played him because <laughs> yeah, he, he he's fatter than him yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that, and he doesn't like how much he comes off like a asshole. Right, right. Because in real life, supposedly he wasn't like that. Part. Obviously, goes against his old school baseball mentality. He's going to play guys who he's got a gut feeling with, and he's going to go by you know baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah they. They they're getting riffs and no. ends up trading a bunch of players and he gets if you're not going to use my lineup then I'm going to give you, not going to give you the players. Now my defense Chris against Pratt this, also in it. My, Chris Pratt. Chris Scott, Pratt. Yeah, please Scott Hatterberg. The uh, I forgot about that. See, great this cast, is, man. This, this is, is why my, this is kind of my point about Moneyball. It's a very forgettable movie. It is a con- well, maybe Social Network. I think has scenes in it. I that- could say the same for Social Network. Uh, I, I, this is the thing. Like I, there's scenes. That I don't pop remember up anything on my, on about Social Facebook. Network. Really? Even uh, there's there's different reasons why I'm defending Social Network, Network against it. Just because of my love for certain things. You know my feelings about David Fincher. I think David Fincher is one of the most underrated directors uh, that's out give there. Give you a director. What? I'll give you a director. Yeah, dire- you have to give me for director. me. I got Aaron Sorkin. What? I got Sorkin uh, on screenplay. Yep, yeah, but he did Social Network as well. I'll give you a screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the shared thing they had. As I said, I go, did he fucking write that he too? Did. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. And then, so you kind of cancel those out. But I, but I think that Social Network, God, is such a fat. Like, they're both like that. But here's the thing about... All right, so uh, there's two things on top of it. I think David Fincher, I think there's a huge piece for me. And I think that his, you know, his repertoire comes with him his, his reputation comes with him into this movie and it's one, one of the one of the most popular things that he did even though other things that he did I, I like more there's some other stuff that he did I like more uh, secondly it's the best thing that what's his name has done two two actors Andrew Garfield and uh, who's the main guy uh, what? Timberlake I can't hear it. Jesse Eisenberg sorry <laughs> best thing Jesse, I think Jesse really? Eisenberg I think he's kind of like that in real life I think that he looks like Mark Zuckerberg. He, I think he nailed it as far as like how to act like a fucking alien, and uh, I think he, I think he kills it. I, what, what else has he done? Zombieland. Uh, come on, even that movie wasn't that great. Adventureland. <laughs> well, this guy does his lands. <laughs> Social Network Land. <laughs> Harvard Land. <laughs> Harvard Land. <laughs> And then Andrew Garfield, same thing. Garfield's very good in it. Garfield's great in it. There's a great scene with him when he comes, but he realizes they're edging him out of the company. Yeah. Justin Timberlake's great in this movie. <laughs> Justin Timberlake he plays Sean, uh, whatever his name is, the guy All from right, Napster. All right, but I think I got a stronger cast. Um, Seymour Hoffman, <sighs> Brad Pitt, 
Jonah Hill, who's a cr- very good actor. Jonah, all, Jonah Hill's all a great nominated. actor. Jonah Hill's a phenomenal actor. You might have me on cast, but... Chris Pratt, but, another underrated actor. But what I'm saying is this. If, 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 Robin right now, Wright. Hold on. Hold on. If, if, we're, if we're talking cast to cast, what we're talking is, I'm saying you might, I might have a lesser cast than this, but it's the got best thing. It's one of the best. The more you got more out of them. This is where they really nailed it, because they had the Aaron Sorkin script behind them, and they really did a great job. Brad Pitt did a really good job. I give him that. And that's for, Brad always you know, does a good job. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah but he yeah. phones in some stuff. I'm sure, but my I just, favorite thing is just watching. Snatch. I was just watching Glorious Bastards clips. Oh yeah, God, it's such a it's such a good it's so out of character of of Tarantino. It it just really is such a good movie, and, it, and I can go on to it about it forever. But and also even his character in it is like it's it's almost it's almost like cartoonish. He play, him playing Aldo Rain. It's almost like it's just this. A lot of it is cartoonish. Cause, cause, well, it's cartoonish because that's why. That's the only thing. The, the, that's why it's the, not my favorite or up in my maybe top four or five Tarantino. It's because of how cartoonish it gets. Well, here's the thing. I mean, that bar scene though. The is, idea of the puts it. It's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, I know we're going off on a, on a tangent here, but <laughs> glorious bastards. But we're talking about one of the actors from from Moneyball. So there you go. I'll tell you this about about the movie. Cartoonish. What I mean is because that. Uh, troop didn't exist, the, you know, the, the Inglorious Bastards. That's what I mean. Like, it was just, like, it's basically, like. Well, yeah, we all know uh, it's, Hitler it's, didn't it's, die it's, in a It's Nazi killing fire. porn. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like that kind of thing. But as far as Tarantino's movie goes, it's one of the most graceful Tarantino movies there are. It's one of the I, least I, campy. I don't know how it is, but it could, think about how much more campy it could have been under Tarantino being a Nazi killing movie. It could have been like Kill Bill, yeah, but with Nazis. Yeah. It wasn't. He really does. That opening scene is one of the best opening scenes in a, so in a movie. Christoph, oh, my God. And then, and, and then uh, it's, just, it's just unbelievable. So that's my point. Um, but what I'm trying to say is. You know, you have that. I don't know if I don't know if Gloria Spencer is the best thing that Brad Pitt's done, but it's kind of the most one of the most interesting. You know what I mean? Um, and I think Snatch is fantastic that he's done that. Moneyball. How stoked are you if you're Billy Bean going? All right, Brad Pitt played. Because <laughs> <laughs> Billy, Billy Bean don't look like Brad Pitt. That's like that David Spade joke. Remember that? <laughs> when he goes, David Spade went to high school. He watched David Spade's first special, and he went to high school with Brad Pitt. And he goes, I always knew Brad Pitt was good looking <laughs> because my grandmother was looking through my yearbook, and she was like, oh, Davey, you're so – I'd fuck that kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's called Take the Hit. It's such a good special. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is – it's not that Moneyball is not the best thing that he's done, uh, but it is the best thing that Jesse. But, but the Social Network is probably the best thing Jesse. What do you do now? You see me like he. The guy does. He does a lot. Of, he does a lot of things that he's not I'll right for. That. So Social Network uh, is he's fantastic. He's a hard Timberlake's guy to like too. In. He, that's the As thing. As an actor, he's the freaking hero of the. That's hero, but what would you call him? He's the. He's the. Uh, I wouldn't say protagonist. I would say because he's. Very antagonistic in the yeah, movie. I yeah. would say he's the lead. There's he's not the a lead. good positive way to spin it. Exactly, but he's not likable, and that's the whole thing. And then anti-hero, and even Andrew, not even anti-hero. Even Andrew Garfield, you're like he's not that likable either. You're like he's kind of a dude. Well, they all. I mean, the whole. But that's why. It, God, I'm making your arguments for you. <laughs> that's why the movie does a good job of turning the elite Harvard kids who are very. Um, Hoity toity, and they feel you. You get that feeling of like the uh, that they feel like they're better than you. Absolutely, like well, that, that was comes the whole across. Point. Well, the whole point was that basically one of the angles of social network is that <laughs> think of it this way: Facebook, which is one of the biggest things inventions ever happened to the human race, right. was started because this like he, an incel couldn't get a fucking date. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's basically why it was started. That's hilarious. Like, it's it's kind of crazy. That was what they're I think they're implying the whole time is like you couldn't get laid, so you started this 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 uh, this uh, this club this 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 group that uh, you only selected yeah. who was a part of it and and this magical thing that you were in control of and and then that became this worldwide dominated uh, you know uh, complete phenomenon. It's crazy. I didn't have Facebook in college at all. I didn't. So well, no, was, we're, we're the age. That yeah, right. It, yeah. Like I, I, my, I have friends. You know, thirty nine, forty years old. I would say half of my friends who aren't in entertainment or just like regular Joes, not on Facebook or most types of social media at all. Yeah, you know what I mean. We, we missed like, that mark. Just they, they, had, they probably had a, a Friendster page. Well, uh, Maybe I don't back, even know. I think we were like in our 20, my, early twenties and stuff. Or? But I was going to say that we literally had the Facebook, like the ba- that's what it was called. We had so when you. Uh, 
we got to our dorms freshman year, and you get all your orientation stuff. They literally give you. It goes, hey, here's to get your income to get to know your incoming freshman class. Here is a book of everybody's like senior yearbook portrait. That's a Facebook. And that's what they got the That's name? what it is. That's what they got the, yeah. name, the, the thing for, right? It's thing any it's you just go through it looking at girls. You know, that's yeah, all you right. did. Well, that's, what do you think the point of Facebook probably was when it that's first what, started? No, that's my point. Is yeah. Because you just want to, you know. But but they but he did a, he did it. It basically is a, is a. I think what he did with Facebook is a method that has been copied even to this day by making things exclusive by just making it for yeah. colleges yeah, yeah, and yeah. one college here, one college there. It, it created demand for it. Yeah, it just created so a worldwide smart. demand. Super smart. Uh, well, that's the other thing so as too. As far as the movie goes, like, well, also think of it this me way. Dude. Counterpoint that. I'll tell you this. Way. What I can counterpoint that. All right. That what Paul D. Put, what didn't work for the Oakland Athletics. Now, they didn't win the National uh, the World Series that year, but they went on a 19-game, 20-game winning streak. They set the, not anymore, but at the time, record for most consecutive games won in a row, using that style of play of getting just getting on base, small ball, if you will, because of the analytical system. I'm sure there's somebody who really knows baseball screaming at me in their car right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... The f- point is that Billy Bean, at the end of the movie, you see him go to Boston to uh, have a meeting with right, the, the Red Sox. president of uh, the Red Sox. Yeah. And they offer him $12.5 million to yeah. become the GM, and he turns it down. Do they ever they been, show the figure in the movie? I don't think they do, right? I think it's known. I also read. Cause yeah, I, actually, yeah, yeah. I, read Mon- I, I, I did read Moneyball before it was a... Uh, oh, okay. I like Michael Lewis's stuff. Um, <clears throat> and the Boston Red Sox are smart enough to, to go, we think this is the future. We're yeah. not using it right, say per se, but we'd like you to start to come over and enact it with us. And even though he turned down the job, they then hired like the second best analytical guy who was wow. known for that. Story. And then the Red Sox won like two years later, right? After right, like right. eighty-six, well, you know, years, nineteen eighteen. Yeah, so they're saying there's there's, there's, there's a math, <laughs> there's a math to it, and all right. that kind of, But here's the thing, man. Another thing I wanted to bring up to defend Social Network. Think this is this is a kind of a tribute to how good of a writer Aaron Sorkin is because there's. There's two movies that come to mind uh, that kind of have the same vibe to them, where they're they're basically all dialogue, and this is one of them. This is a movie he made interesting off of a court case. It wasn't even about – it was about the creation of – it was all flashbacks about the creation of Facebook. But most of it was about a a court case. And there's a lot of movies about court cases, but this wasn't even a court case. It was an arbitration. It was like a – yeah, deposition. I think it was arbitration. I think think, – or – oh, no, it was deposition. I'm sorry. You're right. Deposition. So – and by using flashbacks, obviously, you need some kind of action, but he keeps you pretty, you know, you're, no, you're, so you're involved. I, a lot of people don't like Aaron Sorkin's writing. I happen to love it. I really? Love I a think lot it's of, great. I loved West Wing. I loved Newsroom. And I know he gets a little... Uh, He's a little bit. He can get a little maybe, pretentious, but, yeah. and like, but you know what? Writer doesn't. You know, like, like honestly, I think the guy's super smart. I think that. I think that he's David a lot Cross. of his writing. I give you a lot. <laughs> what? I got David Cross. What? Sopranos never sounded any, you know. I go, that's genius, perfect writing. I mean, never David, got not like, David Cross, David. Uh, uh, so, not Simon. Da- um, um, what am I thinking of, Al? Well, David Simon, there you go. David Simon, Ed Burns. That's smart writing. Oh, yeah, it's not, it's not really too. pretentious writing. But what I'm saying about Sorkin is that, like, you always got to love a type of writing where they're, they're connecting the dots for you and they're bringing you in on the third David beat. David Chase, I'm an idiot. What'd you say? David Chase. David Chase. David Simon. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of stuff I think that Aaron Sorkin leads out in his writing, and he's and he's just assuming you're gonna know. So they're talking already in a code. Like it's almost how uh, when I had well, I, well yeah, I, but the, so there are those great scenes where Jonah Hill and Brad Pitt are just like wheeling and dealing. Great scenes. Yeah, you just go now. Give me this. Now give me that guy. Get him on the line. We'll give you this for so and so. Really fun to watch. Like, but fast pace. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. That's what I'm saying. That's the best Sorkin part. Of, speed. That's the best part of that writing. Where you're yeah. like, oh my god, if if you had to, but if, you need if, the actors if, to pull if, that if, off too. Absolutely. You know, if you had to spell this out for me, this would be a five hour movie. Right. But because you're, you're giving me the benefit of the doubt to think I'm smart enough to know what you're talking about, I'm watching that. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like there's a shorthand. That's like we had when David Feldman did the podcast. He defended Godfather. The three, and he brought up a great point because the first two are based on novels that had a shorthand that the public already knew when they went into them. If you didn't know of the story of The Godfather when you walked into it, there was things that you'd be like, "What is going on?" Like, right. like certain wars, certain right. things that happened because the novel's like a thousand pages. The first Godfather, that was Mario, hot. Well, it's like a lot of pages. So, but it's a big story. Thousand. It's but it's you know what I'm saying, whatever. So, I think it's more than like three hundred. No, 
it's not. It's more than that. No way. It's whatever. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> It's, it's a lot of information. That's all it, I'm saying. It is very detailed. They go into character studies way. I mean, you learn about everybody. So you have guys that are good enough. At, turning it into a movie and streamlining it is so that I always think is the hardest part. That's of what I how mean. How do you get it down to that's an why hour and a half, two think, hours? Exactly. That's why I, and make it entertaining. You could do it and make it look stupid. All right. Well, on that point, it's like yeah, making numbers and studying analytics. That's boring ass shit. In fact, when I read Moneyball. At the end, by the time they get to the real like number crunching math, I put the book down. I go, well, I can't even understand. <laughs> so to make that interesting in a yeah. movie is very well done as that well. That is well done as well. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, I think that I think that Social Network made more of a splash. I think that uh, I will give you this. I love. I, I was. I did like the song from Moneyball a lot. The girl. She's like, ah, yeah. that's such a cool. That's song. a nice little relationship with him and his daughter. Him and his daughter. He doesn't watch the games and and. Uh, the one game he did decide to watch was going to be the the record breaker, and they're up eleven nothing, and then the Royals come all the way back, and then he just turns away and he watches, and then they actually end up winning again. But <laughs> but what I'm saying is, um, yeah, I think it's like Social Network was like um, you took a very uh, the thing about this, not a lot of people Moneyball, even though they had the novel. One other thing you could say is that eh, it's pretty obscure. You went the novel, Facebook, like oh my god, think about like. Everybody has an opinion about Facebook, and to turn that into a, yeah. a, a popular a popular movie, like they, it could have been like. What I'm saying is this: by by no, having Aaron Sorkin do it, the cheesiness, corniness factor was really left off because, which is great. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it okay. could have been way cornier. I agree. If it, with, if it didn't have that writing, if it didn't, if it wasn't done, even Fincher, like making it, everything's wooden. Everything, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. you're in the you're in the deposition room, you're in the Harvard with right. all the wood. Everything's very very muted and downplayed. When in actuality, it could have been over the top. It could have been done. Everything's Facebook blue the whole entire fucking movie. It's funny too. I mean, in tone wise, that's what I'm saying. When you talk about the exclusivity, I've always had that like fascination with Harvard, just because it is so exclusive, you know, and especially with like the Lampoon. You know, and that being all like so serious, I've always had that like kind of weird fascination with it. Yeah. So it's always fun to like get a glimpse into like that kind of world. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Right. That's another thing. It lets you in on a, a club, but they but both kind of do. Exactly. They both kind of do because you're, you're not, we're not in the general room. manager's baseball. You're like, as a little kid, when you're trading baseball cards, you go, "All right, I'll give you Dow Strawberry and Doc Gooden." You know, from yeah. Bill Buckner. I mean, nobody would make that trade. <laughs> he just died. He I just know. That's away. why I kind of said. Anyway, but the other thing is this. The so the uh, money ball, uh, I will say that oh, I had something I was gonna say about it. And I totally it went out of my head. Shoot, that was a pretty good point too. Like you, um, yeah, I totally, I totally forgot. Oh my god, that was crazy. I oh, had a point one. about about money ball that would have really nailed you, and I don't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, 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 I know what it was. You know me. I'm not. I try. I try to get into some sports. I'm. I'm. My new thing is even though I'm wearing I'm wearing a James Harden shirt, but I'm I'm gonna become a Knicks fan now. I'm a Knicks fan, so okay. I'm trying to follow that when that when they come back. Anyway, because they have new draft picks and all that kind of stuff, right? But uh, the thing about I like baseball. I've always I, I always enjoyed it, but like I never dive fully in because of things like. Moneyball, where it's like, even though the the movie's so interesting to me, but the science Expand behind it, on that. Okay, the, the science is so cool, but just the fact that, it's not that the fix is in. All right, like in basketball, intentional fouls, hate that. Uh, 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 baseball, intentional walks, hate that. Anything that takes away from like the uh, lesson you, you learn uh, how to play sports. Not necessarily in baseball, I mean in basketball, but baseball, that's more strategic. Why that, they, they, they don't they don't hit home runs? Just no, throw the ball, try to get down the plate. Why are we not necessarily? I mean, you could be setting up for. Uh, yes, it's usually to get around a batter, but it can also be intentionally walk this guy. We can get you can maybe set up a double play or something. There's more yeah. thinking. Of, you know, ah, that's a good point. It's not just uh, well. The, well, the other one, basketball. Is basketball. I hate the, the ending of is basketball game. Yeah. I think a lot is a lot of old. You know, old. Complaint is that it's just yeah it stops the it's a, it's a shitty ending and you don't want it like, stops all momentum and I think is this if I, if I was like huge, if I was a huge baseball fan I'm like Moneyball might the idea of it the analytics 
might take the magic of it away from me. So it's like, oh, this is all yes, science. This is all set up by I science. I understand that. And not fully, because they still have to play the game. Right. Yeah. And then when people win, people lose. And that's the big argument as well. It still comes down to X's and O's. You know, you still got to pitch the ball. You still got to hit sure. the ball. You still got to run and catch. Yeah, sure. And I tend to agree with the old school way of thinking. Like, you guys still got to play the game. Because analytics now is like, it, it creeps into like, my favorite, it creeps into hockey, which you would think, you go, well, how is that? We go, I don't know. You, these guys, they start to have certain, you know, speed on their shot. They are certainly they do well on the right side of the ice, better than the left side. Yeah, it's like all this crazy shit Which to think about. Like, you go, how do you how right. do you quantify that? Because <laughs> yeah. because uh, uh, like how do you how do you time out how much how much time a game and they're on the right side as, as opposed with that many people on the ice? Right, and then it being such a fast paced hockey was slow to adapt it, but every team has an analytics department now, and it's just like that's the way of studying the way of the future. Which and is my point think- to begin with is why. That kind of thing that Paul D. Podesta made changed the way sports, which is maybe next to Facebook, one of the, I mean, the biggest thing in the world, yeah. changes the way that it was looked at and studied and, you know. And do you think as far as other sports getting it, do you think it's, do you think it's gospel in all sports or do you think it could be witchcraft in some of these things? Or like, or just like, well, I mean, I never thought, wind. I mean, hockey is about as old school and old boys club as it could be, you know. Old time hockey is like a corrupt, slogan. Corrupt or no? I don't think it's corrupt at all. I think it's also pretty impossible to throw a hockey game unless you're, you know. I mean, it would be pretty obvious, I think. But I don't know what you mean corrupt. I don't really think any of the major no, sports no, are no. corrupt. I don't think they're, no, I don't think they're corrupt either. <coughs> I'm just asking because you know more than I do. No, well then no. My answer is no, not at all. Zero <laughs> percent. I guess yeah. You thing. can't. You could. Can you throw a baseball game? Yeah, I guess you can throw a baseball game. I know. It, I mean, baseball. Oh, the there's always there, right? been like stealing signs and shit like that, but. That one's always been really, you know, that one has always been kind of a, well, if you can do it and you can get away with it in baseball, it's always had that mentality of, well, then good for you. You know what I mean? And then go for nothing it. really you can do in hockey to, you know, be able to. Yeah. So I think, with, I think what, what I'm trying to say is when it comes down to these movies, I think that social networks is more entertaining to me and it's, a, it's about a topic that I know more about like especially when it came out like sure I think it came out perfect timing it came out when it came out like Facebook was 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 now you have Facebook where it's what 2010 I think it was at, it was at the ro- romance level a very high romance level we had with Facebook like we were in the honeymoon phase with Facebook at that point like we still we, st- we knew about the controversy from their past but now you know as far as like stealing uh, people's info and and then pr- and then saying they were doing their due diligence on Facebook and they're not like you're they're real they're becoming this corporate face that that uh, everybody's rallying I mean, against. and even more now I mean it, you can say it however aisle you fall on in this one could have swayed elections presidential elections you know, I think it definitely did I think <laughs> one thing I, it's, it's so funny because I think that I think that being the age that we are and I think of the level of intelligence, I don't think I'm a dummy. And I, don't, I don't think you're a dummy at all. So I think be, being that and being kind of – and because we're in this business and in show business, I think you're more aware of what's going on a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. So I think knowing what a fake article looks like is easier for us than, than a lot of other people. I think, I think people get fooled. And then if you, if you, if you would see that article, you'd be like, how – wait, how did you what, read this? I, and this that's a great point because that – I think you give people too much credit for being like, you didn't fucking know that was fake. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But then, but then I think about it, then like, my dad has probably gotten close to being catfished or scammed. My aunt almost Like, fake. unless my mom was there to stop but it. That was like different. That was a phone thing. But yeah, but uh, I mean, know, as far as like reading an article, it's like, Hillary Clinton is, uh, I mean, she my, shot I mean, a Russian, you know, like, and, yeah, you know, yeah. and people are like, see? <laughs> see this? <laughs> and you're like, see what? You maniac. You know, like, that's what you're wondering about the people that are sitting there going, oh my God, I'm believing. Because they're so, because all day they're online. online. Everything and you know what? Screen. Here's the other thing, too, is not to make this political, but I do think the uh, majority, or maybe not even majority, and I'm not smart enough to be able to quantify this, but a lot of people who, uh, let's be honest, a lot of elderly people uh, vote Republican. My father, for one. He is a trusting guy. He has seen stuff he come over the, the internet a different time. where he would be like, I don't understand why somebody would be trying to do this purpose for, you know? Yeah. Like, he would go, like... There's, he has no cynicism. It's like, he's gotten, a, he's gotten a scam email before, and it's been under the name of one of his friends. Yeah, To yeah, the he point where he'd be story. like, why would uh, Dick Florsheimer send me a virus? Because like, well, it's, it's not him, but he doesn't, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And so it's I like, know exactly what you mean. And, and you don't think about that. You go, yeah, there's people who just can be easily fooled, not for their lack of intelligence or anything. It's just they don't know that world that now they're a part of. Yeah, and and you know, and you hate the idea that like it's, if you tell me not about your dad, like I hate that I do. Like I hate right. that I. I kind of wish I didn't. I in I that in that realm. I think there's some people, not your dad. In your dad's situation, that's just like, oh, the technology is beyond. Like no, I'm not, no technology for old men. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, but when it comes to some of the people that voted a certain way, like here's the thing about your dad. Like if he was like, oh, why would my friend send me a virus? But your dad's not going to base his voting but here's on the thing. what he, the, only on the internet. That maybe, but he's also could get a piece of information that could, you know, he could also be like uh, somebody, not necessarily my dad, but somebody could see something on Facebook that's so clearly a scam to your eye, going, well. I don't know what the example would be, but there's absolutely no validity to it. But they're not checking the source, or they're not, you know, it could say, like, NY Times, and there could be two S's on the Times. Yeah. Goes, well, if the NY Times yeah, wrote yeah. it, you know, they're it's, they're like, it's so easily. But, like, what I do with that is, like, I'll do that with where it's, like, uh, you'll see something online, and it'll be, like, crotchety, crotch, crotch. It'll be, like, something <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Like, oh, why is somebody sharing this? When it's some wacky fucking website that nobody pays attention to. But let's go back to the movies. Uh, oh, all right, sir. Oh, all right, sir. Uh, that's your big boy. Um, anyway, my point of being this, I think my main argument is what I said. I think for what it has, it they knocked it out of the park as far as social network goes. It's still interesting. It is rewatchable. I think Moneyball's forgettable. Uh, and I, because I forgot a lot of the points of Moneyball, but I n- remember the story on Social Network, and I remember a lot of the scenes from Social Network. Yeah, but is that um, because it's just a more popular story? There's a possibility, but that you know that's the that's part of the movie. Like, I guess it was so. done by more pop- But but the thing is, like, the other I mean, here's baseball. the thing: like, you could walk down the street, nine out of ten people will know the Facebook story. Maybe three. Out of ten people yeah, know possibly. the money ball story. Yeah, yeah so. possibly. Now I think they both took a very you know mundane topic and 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 did, did a great job. You know, on the one side you had the deposition, like I was saying. On your side, you have yeah. analytics of baseball. Nah, you're right. It's so, a niche. It's a niche thing, but I'm saying I think they both did a great job with it. But I think that social network just is more. I think there's more drama there. There's more drama there. I think that they have. I think the drama in Definitely the other more one, drama. more drama, which is, which is what you want in an entertainment vehicle. Yeah, I give you drama. But because on yours, they probably had. To, that's why I think that coach got a little bit mad. Because I'm sure a lot of these these you know these drag down arguments were a little bit. You know, they were t- they were they were yeah, they, the volume was put I, up on them. There's a actually bit. Uh, some. People go, I don't know the, the validity of some of the... Yeah, it's, you know... Exactly. Made for movies. And you know what? That's what you need, because it's entertainment, and you need that. But I think when it comes to the other one, it probably was a little bit more true to the tone of what was going on. Now, now I'm saying they probably they probably amped that up, too, but it was still... You're dealing with billions of dollars. So right. they were they were dealing in a real, uh, <laughs> a real actual life drama there. The other ones, they were like, hey, at the end of the day, we still have our jobs, and we're... You know, like, it, 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 it didn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was stakes. There was All definitely right, stakes. There was fine. Reputation. I gotta give you this one. Yeah, you, 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 well, I you're, think just because um, you, you hit, you won a little on too many points. <laughs> right, what do you think, Alex? Did you listen? Social Network. All, All right. right. You don't have to be so sure about it. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> that, I think that sums it up there. We do have to mention uh, uh, our producer, Alex, uh, is moving to Los Angeles for six months. That is correct. And our, we're losing our beloved show, Briz Studios. Yes. And so. And, R.I.P. Show Is it? Is it the podcast is not going anywhere. Well, podcast we just have is still to change around. locations. We're going to change locations. Alex will still be a part of the show. Thanks for all you do. And uh, thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you for everything. We love you, Alex. And uh, you, we'll have, we'll, we'll have uh, when he gets back. We'll have a, a welcome back, Alex. Show. Well, he'll pick the two movies that we do. And okay. Sit down on the show. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and so, but uh, what do you want to plug there? Since we, well, I guess we're not, um, we're not plugging Showbiz Studios anymore. I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am in the city all weekend at the Comedy Cellar, and you can always follow my tour dates at Andrew uh, at AndyFiore dot com, and I'm also at Andy Fiore on all social media. My Sirius XM show is called The Raw Report. It's every Thursday at four p.m. on Sirius XM channel ninety nine. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm on. I'm in this. I'm not on the road until July. So, 
I uh, next week I'm opening up for Jim Norton at the Borgata uh, in Atlantic City, which should be really fun. I'm also this weekend. I'm at the uh, you know starting tonight, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'll be at the Comedy Cellar. I'm at Shawnee Time on Instagram and Twitter. I also have a show on Sirius Satellite Radio. They can check out called Celebrate with very funny friend of the show, friend of the pod, Kevin McCaffrey. Big bad Kevin McCaffrey. Uh, and so email us, DefenderMovie at gmail.com. Tweet us at DefenderMovie on Twitter. We got to do uh, a fan matchup coming up. So we have, yeah, we're, give yeah. us some shout outs. Do it see yeah. some matchups you'd like to see. We had guys send us. It's hard some, to think of them. It is hard to think of them. We, we, I have, we we have some help. I had one today. Uh, uh, Justin Smith sent me a couple, so I'll oh, find yeah, that yeah. after. But uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.